Chia Nagada Nakoa Adila Adochki Digwado Ida Digwatansha Wailhi Ke E Wailhi. My name's Nakoa Chiltowski. I grew up in Wolf Town and I currently live in Wolf Town. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make blackberry dumplings. These dumplings were a staple growing up in my household. Um, I remember as a kid, my grandma would send us out and we had blackberry bushes that grew along the edge of our garden space. And so we would pick the blackberries and bring them inside and my grandma would wash them up and she would, would always make us dumplings. Um, also, I do enjoy cooking in the community. I'm very active as far as that goes in the community, um, teaching people how to to cook, teaching you know people how to, to sew, just anything that I, I you know can can do as a homemaker. Uh, today, I've already washed the blackberries and I have the ingredients laid out. Uh, my pan is heating up with the water, so we took four cups of blackberries, and these are store-bought blackberries and we're going to put them into the pot. And you want to fill your pot up halfway of the blackberries. You don't want to fill it to where there's a lot of water in there because it'll cause your blackberry mixture to come out soupy um, and the taste will be kind of runny. So if you can see down in here, have our blackberries and whenever it's level it, it's just underneath the blackberry line so once this comes to a boil then we'll add our sugar you're not going to keep it at a roll boil you only want it to boil down to where it softens the berries and then that's whenever we're going to uh, make our mixture to add the dumplings in here and drop them in so our berries have started to simmer just a little bit and they're starting to change color from a darker uh, color to a lighter color. I don't know if you can see down in there, but they are starting to simmer a little. We're gonna turn them back up. And right now is when we're gonna add our sugar. So I like my dumplings sweet. I don't like them to be tart or sour, zunzost sour. So I usually add two cups of sugar in mine. And you do want to stir these so that they don't scorch. Kind of keep stirring them every once in a while. Um, growing up, we always had chores. So my responsibility was to to cook and to clean the kitchen area so i made sure by the time my mom was home and my dad or like if my grandma needed help and stuff in the kitchen then i always made sure to to have the food on and ready for supper um as a kid growing up i remember my grandpa was part of this singing group and so they would have a lot of singings at their house and me and my sister Becky would always get donuts and we would put them on a um, like a like a um, cookie sheet and carry them around and we acted like waitresses and we would go around and we would uh, ask everybody if they wanted a donut or if they wanted coffee and, and we would pretend that we would like work in a cafe or whatever uh, but I think that that's one of the probably the best memories that I have growing up of being in the kitchen with my grandma because she would be preparing like all kinds of food and we would have it sitting on the kitchen table and people would they would practice singing or if we had visitors that would come and sing for my grandpa or with my grandpa then she always had a big meal laid out for everybody uh, also we would gather um, on Sundays at my mom's house and we'd have like Sunday dinners or sometimes yeah you know my grandma's sisters we would do a lot of visiting in the community so uh, my grandpa during certain parts of the year he would always take me out with him a lot of times on Dobson Ridge because his friend Ed Welch lived up there so I can remember going up into where there was like a cow pasture up there and we would go out on the other side and we would get like wild greens sometimes we would get mushrooms um, and one one memory in particular uh, my grandpa we were coming down the road and my grandpa seen a orange 
tiger lily that was growing just off the edge of the bank and so he said that he wanted to get that tiger lily for my grandma so i can remember him putting uh like this rope on the back side of his truck and he went down off the edge of the bank and he got that tiger lily and i can remember when he came back up the edge of the bank he had it in his mouth and then whenever we got home he gave it to my grandma and it was just like the most beautiful kind of love i've ever seen so our berries are coming to a boil now and they're starting to get a little bit foamy on the top so we're gonna keep them boiling until they start to break down <clears throat> At like a like your heat should be about on a seven so that it's not quite a roll boil but it's it's more than a simmer uh, once the berries start to break down then we'll begin to drop in our our bread mixture so we're gonna go ahead and start to prepare that so you take I really don't measure anything just because I've, I've been cooking for so many years but if I had to estimate, I would say probably about <clears throat> three and a half to four cups of flour, self-rising flour, and you're gonna make a well in the middle. And then you're gonna take your whole milk. Uh, you can use 2%, but your the whole milk is the best because it makes your, your dumplings the fluffiest. Uh, in the well, you want to incorporate your flour slowly. That's how you get your get the fluff in your dumplings. teaching people how to cook uh, old recipes are handed down you know from our grandparents and to our mothers to our aunts to our, our cousins and I think that that's just really a great way to be able to sit down and, and relate to each other and to be able to to visit and it always gives us something to talk about and when you're sharing a meal with with each other then you're sharing love with each other So you're going to combine this until you get a sticky consistency, but not runny like like a pancake mix. It's just going to be, if you can see how it still has some elasticity to it, because that's how you're going to drop your dumplings into the boiling water. Okay, so now that we have our dough and our berries are at a roll, a roll boil, we're going to take our dough and we're going to drop it, drop it into the mixture. Kind of have to get a big lump of it on there because you don't want tiny dumplings because they'll fall apart. But this is the same concept that you use whenever you're making chicken and dumplings. Same way. Try to drop them beside of each other not on top of each other so they don't stick. Try not to overcrowd your your pot. 
because your dumplings will start to fall apart if it's overcrowded. So you don't want to stir it. You only want to turn it. Well, these are some pretty dumplings. You can see how, how they're fluffing up right away. My grandma's name was Amy Welch Reed, um, and my grandpa's name was Moody Reed. And I was fortunate enough, fortunate enough to, to grow up in a household with my grandparents. Um, I was 12 when my grandpa passed away, and he was 78. And I had my grandma until I was 27, and she passed whenever she was 91. And she probably cooked all the way up until till she had, had got sick, maybe like the last four or five years of her life. But um, I always say that she could just stick her finger in something and it just tasted like magic all the time. I hope to be that kind of grandma to my grandson. Both of my daughters, um, they both, Tama is learning to cook. Uh, Mila's a good little cook. She makes the best banana pudding in the world. Um, and she fries the best potatoes. I don't know if anybody's been keeping count, but I think we're somewhere around 25 dumplings. Toshko Hish, 25. Now we're going to boil these dumplings for about 8 to 10 minutes. And you'll know whenever your dumplings are done because they they start to get in a little bit hard and they start to, to float. So you'll know exactly when your dumplings are done. And again, don't stir them. Just try to turn them as much as you can. And this will, your mixture will thicken up. Don't cover your pot because it'll cause your, your uh, dumplings to deflate. So we're going to turn our heat down to about between three and four. And we're just going to let them kind of slow simmer. Okay, our berries and our dumplings are now done. They're nice and fluffy. It's a good sweet treat. Um, you can eat them plain or you can put you some ice cream on the top. Uh, with my job, I work as a, a student at the Cherokee, um, the Cherokee Master Apprenticeship, Language Apprenticeship Program. So <clears throat> we go out and we're able to get the language for some of the greens that we get to gather and then we bring them back and then we prepare them and then we make a meal out of it. So that way we're incorporating the language into what we're doing. But the Clamat program is probably one of the most awesome programs that is implemented into the tribe. That way that we're doing our part in saving the language. If you want to test out the dumplings, you are welcome to. And I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, also, side note, you don't have to just use blackberries for your dumplings. Uh, sometimes it's out of season. These were fresh, fresh from the store. But you can also get these frozen bags of mixed berries. Same concept, do it the same way. You can use uh, only strawberries and you can make strawberry dumplings. Um, I've never made blueberry dumplings, but I'm sure that you could probably do that also. But definitely make your dumplings for your next family gathering. Ski.